What's going on family? It's Barrett, your friendly firearms pastor and connoisseur, coming at you today to bring you the review that a lot of people are not gonna like me for, but guess what? I don't care. <laughs> but that's okay because nobody really likes me anyway. <laughs> With all that said, we're gonna talk about the P365, the uh, things that I like about it, things that I don't like about it, some of the issues that I'm noticing, some of the things that I haven't noticed that other people have noticed, and everything else revolving around this taboo 13 round micro subcompact pistol. Before talking about my experiences with the pistol, I do want to kind of go over the features of the pistol with you. Some of the more noticeable features. If you've noticed or not, it's really small. I was standing next to a mathematician at SHOT Show when we pulled out the magazines of the P365 and he said, I'm a mathematician and I do not understand how they fit 10 rounds into that magazine and 12 rounds in this magazine. And matter of fact, I think a lot of people in the industry were really interested in that as well. And I think that that's what makes the P365 the P365. It's not the trigger, it's not the sights, it's really not even the size of the gun, it's the magazine capacity. Because let's get off, let's be honest with each other. Everybody wants to be able to carry a gun <clears throat> that is small enough to conceal, but large enough to have magazine capacity. I mean, that's what the magazine capacity of a firearm is the, is the um, how do you describe it? It's the safety net. It's the thing that's appealing for most people who carry a firearm, especially for me. I know that I want to, if ever I were to get in a self-defense situation, I want to put a lot of bullets down range. And I also want to make for that contingency of an additional bad guy, or maybe even two additional bad guys. So that's really the thing that separates the P365 from, let's say the Glock 43 or the Walther PPS. It's the ability to have a lot of bullets jammed up into this very tiny gun. It's about the size of my hand. Now, it's a little bit smaller than a Glock 43 uh, in all respects, as far as height and as far as length. If you know what a Glock 43 looks like, it's, it's just, it's very, very small, or very, um, it's just about that much smaller on, on both the tops and the bottoms of it. And I do want to commend SIG on their ability to make a very low profile gun. Notice how we don't have a lot of crap sticking out the side for the uh, slide release or a safety or anything like that. This gun was made to be carried. As you can see, it's just very, very minimalistic, very, very thin, very low profile. But where it makes up in its thinness, if you look, the frame for the pistol grip is actually very, very thin as well. Now I haven't taken this gun apart and we are gonna pass it through a sand, dirt, and water test, but let's look at some of the more, uh, some of the other features. So the front sight with the back sight gives you that SIG feel. I don't know if you all know what I'm talking about, but if you've ever picked up a, a SIG um, 229 or a SIG 226 and with some of the sights that they have, the combat sights that they have, it has a similar feel. Really nice night sights that you get on here. Uh, I've shot them during the nighttime. They're very nice. But this, the sight is a combat sight picture. And to give you an idea of what kind of accuracy you can achieve with what the sights can communicate to you, I shoot this gun fairly well at 25 yards on an A zone. And then at 15 yards, you can see me, or actually, this is actually 20 yards that you're seeing me, shoot at um, a five inch steel plate. And in order to shoot at that five inch steel plate, I have to basically superimpose the front dot onto the target with the top sight and the back sights aligned. So I've got equal height and equal light between the sights and wherever that big dot is superimposing is essentially where the bullet is going to go. The trigger is another wonderful thing that makes this gun what it is. It's got a, it's got a really crisp trigger pull some people have described it as sluggish, but I don't. There's my reset, there's my wall, and it just, I like it. Um, it kind of reminds me of a really nice 320 trigger. Um, now, I'm not a big fan of the 320 or the 320's trigger, but I felt some, some of the newer triggers that SIG has, and I do dig them. So the trigger is pre-travel to wall, little hiccup, and then boom. It does help me be accurate at 50 yards, as you can see, shooting at 50 on the A-Zone, C-Zone size steel. You can consistently ring out pretty well with that. Well, what kind of experiences have you had, Barrett? It's a great question. I've not really had any negative experiences with this gun. 
I've had 2,600 rounds. I've had three malfunctions due to ammo, from what I'm able to tell, remanufactured ammo, that uh, it was a bulge case and they had a failure to eject. So the extractor did not pull out the bulge casing. In fact, I had to pull out the bulge casing. All three instances, it was clear because you had to take like, um, a, like, like a, I took a little screwdriver, a little knife to pull it out. So I'm not really attributing that to the gun. I will attribute that to ammo. I've been learning uh, from you guys how to test different guns with different ammos because I know that I, everybody shoots different ammo um, and I've been trying different defense ammo, seeing how it cycles, those different types of things and I have no uh, issues with uh, Federal HST, uh, Spear Gold Dowd, have no, had, had no issues with uh, Fort Scott Munitions TUI, and I've had no issues with the actual SIG 365 ammo, which we're going to get into here in a second. But when it comes to like the dead triggers that I've hear people reporting, and uh, some of the guys from Military Arms Channel, they've not had the best luck with their, uh, their two previous 365s, I just not had those issues. And that's one of the things that we have to understand about guns and gun manufacturing, is that you you're taking a probability test <laughs> that when you pick up and purchase a firearm, you are betting that you are going to get a gun that is uh, the, the, how the manufacturer intends to design the gun. Now, sometimes you have things like um, where you get a gun and it doesn't work how you want it to and you send it back to the manufacturer and they make it right. But then there are guns that are just inherently flawed. Those designs are flawed and they just don't work. I don't know if that's true with this or not. All I know is that SIG sent this to me. The gun works, the gun works just fine. I've not had any problems with it and that's just that. Now, I'm not a paid representative of SIG or anything like that. And even if I were, I would uh, charge people for exposure of their products, not my opinion, because you're still gonna buy it or not buy it based off of my opinion, so what difference does it make? So, with that said, um, yes, I like the gun, I carry the gun, and I think the gun works. Uh, I'm, let me let me rephrase that. I will carry the gun, but it's gone through 2,600 rounds without any cleaning. So I want to clean it first. <laughs> and I'm not taking it apart or anything, but one of the things that I have noticed is that this back rear takedown pin, the last these last 100 rounds, is starting to, started to walk itself out. Walked itself out probably, I want to say about a tenth of an inch. And I was able to look at it going, hmm. And when it started to work it out a little further, I closed the slide and it stopped about right there. And it wouldn't go into battery because that pin was like that. So I pushed the pin back in, racked it, and it obviously went back together fine. So I'd like to uh, follow up with my representative at SIG about that, see if there are any issues um, concerning that. But in all honesty, I don't think it's really that big of a deal because pins walk out all the time on guns, especially if you shoot them like crazy. Now again, you gotta keep in mind, we're putting a nine millimeter through a very tiny gun, and all that energy is vibrating throughout the gun and uh, being absorbed into the gun, and so parts on the gun are gonna wear a little bit faster, obviously. Uh, but yeah, so, but before I could carry it, let's, pa pass, let's see if it passes a sand test, a, the Indiana dirt test, the sand test, and the baptism test. So here we are with my Indiana dirt test, but we're going to do it a little differently because I've been asked to do this differently. Uh, one of my good friends and mentor, Steve Fisher, told me, you need to start doing reliability testing is more realistic. And I'm like, okay. So I guess the idea is, is that I don't have one in the chamber, no in the chamber, and I do have SIG's defense ammo. And what we're going to do is we're just going to toss it down the ground and act like it's been kicked around or scuffled over pick it up, rack it, and try to make it work. Here we go, ready? Oh, it's falling down the ground. Oh, oh, oh my God, oh goodness, oh, I got it. And I've taken it, I've racked it, okay? So it's racked, let's see if it fires. Right out of my lean to here. I'm gonna aim for that target. Hit, hit. Worked just fine, that's pretty cool. Now let's do the sand test. All right, now that it passed that, we've got SIG's defense ammo again. And what we're gonna do, one's not in the chamber, this is sand. So we're gonna drop it in the sand. Oh, I'm gonna kick over it. Oh, oh self-defense situation, self-defense situation, oh my gosh. Picked it up and I've racked it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if it works. That's my, my kids play. I shoot right next to where my kids play. I know, I'm a horrible person. At least I don't do it when they're outside. Okay. 
let's uh, get on that target there. Not a problem. Very interesting. So it's past that sand uh, defense test, that dirt defensive scenario test. Now it's going to see if it passes the baptism test. Now, I don't baptize people like that. Um, although I did one time. And I plunged the guy into the water because he was like really scared. And I just held him under there until he started, the bubbles started to come up. He got the Holy Spirit that day. None of that story is true, although it could be. And you could be that person. Bubbles have stopped coming up, so we're gonna pick it up. We're gonna wreck it. And we're gonna shoot it here at 25. Oh, nothing. Big click on that one. Nothing happened. Rack. Let's try it again. Okay. Uh, what happened that last round? It received a primer strike. Where are you at? It received a primer strike, but it did not, it was not, it was a, like a light primer strike. I don't think it's the ammo's issue. shoot that the last time but we did have a, a light primer strike there all right family given everything that we've seen from the 365 in this video what are my conclusions well it's pretty simple i believe that this is this gun is a very nice gun i can shoot with it at distance i can shoot with it very very fast it's got a very large magazine capacity um, it's very slim uh, profile so i can carry it me being a thinner guy appendix carrier whatever uh, desire you wish to carry it. I've got no problem carrying it and I would I would carry it and I would recommend that my wife would carry it too because she really likes the gun and she performs really well with the gun. With all of that said, let's talk about probability. Probability that you would get a good P365. I don't know. And really that's what it comes down to in the gun industry. Whenever we buy a firearm, we're taking a gamble, especially when we buy a carry gun, something that we're, we, we uh, are defending our lives with. There are guns that people build and they, and they swear by them. There are guns that people buy and they swear by them. There are just people, different strokes for different folks. And really what it comes down to is, I will, I will stand by the statement. You will find that it's more probable that when you buy a Glock 19, that it is going to work in all conditions more so than, you know, any other gun out there. And that's why I carry a Glock 19. It's also why I carry a Glock 43. So I don't have any problem saying that you may pick up a P365 and not have the same experiences that I have because it's about 50-50 from what I'm hearing from people who message me. People have good experiences, people have bad experiences. Now, I don't know if that's the newer version of the 365. I don't know if that's the older version of the 365. I don't know anything about that. All I know is what, what I have and what I've tested, and that's all the conclusions that I can come to, honestly. Now, with all of that said, I kind of want to show you and talk with you a little bit about SIG's defense ammo. SIG uh, said, hey, we'd like to send you some 365 ammo for it. So they sent me 100 rounds of the, full, uh, the F uh, FMGA like, target practice rounds, and they sent me 50 rounds of the uh, target practice, or the, not target practice ammo, the defense rounds that you saw that we shot earlier. I put them under some ballistic testing and found that they flowered really nicely. I'll let you see that video right here. And I found that they shot consistently. Their same point of aim, aim was the same point of impact for both the FMJ and the defense rounds. And I think that that's something important that SIG is kind of cornering. They're saying that we understand that people want to have the, the closest representation as far as uh, recoil and everything like that, what the gun feels like when it shoots their defense rounds when they practice with it. So they sell practice ammo. And I gotta tell you, I cannot tell a difference between the practice ammo and the actual defense ammo. Now with most uh, ammos, I can tell the difference right off the bat. Like I picked up student's gun before and I started shooting it because they gave it to me. And I'm like, this is the, why do you have defense rounds in here? You know, and like, they're like, oh, I didn't know I had them in there. You can just feel a difference if you, sh if you shoot enough. And it's the same thing with the 365 ammo, except I can't tell a difference between the 365 FMJ and the actual defense rounds themselves. So that's, that's pretty cool, I think. All right, we're gonna do four more, but we're not gonna do it in slow-mo. We're just gonna put her up there. Here we go. Clear. 
Oh yeah. Great level of consistency here. Look at this. This is really cool. Everything goes, it reaches, and then it comes back for whatever reason. That's okay. Let's look at these wound patterns because they appear to be just these straight, narrow lines. These straight, narrow lines. Now, now I know a lot of people out there are going to be like, you're a shill. You're a paid, enthusiastic admirer of SIG. I'm not. I'm not. I get guns for free, and I get ammo for free from them, but that's not going to change my opinion and my reportings on the, on the guns because I, 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 I've set up this channel from the disposition that I want to report with all honesty and integrity, and I'm going to stand before God one day with judgment over me based off of my opinion of particular firearms because I'm going to be either telling the truth or I'm going to be lying. And I, I take that seriously. So I'm not lying to you about my findings. I'm not lying to you about my experiences or anything like that. But I am just reminding you that they are mine. They're not anybody else's. And I'm not saying that you know anybody else can't have negative experiences. All I'm saying is the experience that I've had has been nothing but positive. I'm very happy with my 365 and I will continue to carry the gun. With all that said, I've hoped you enjoyed it. True X is here saying, hold fast, stay the course. We'll see you next time. Out.